Now we're going to fit an obstacle drive, so we need to pop out one of the blanking plates from the front. So to do that, you just squeeze on the plastic tabs on the inside and then push forwards and it will come out. Like that. So you just squeeze those two plastic tabs from the inside. To fit an optical drive in one of these cases it's really easy because it's just held in with a push button and if I press the button in you'll see the two pins come out and they're the two pins that hold the actual drive in place and if you press it again it releases and that's the actual button there so you just press it to hold it in and then press it again to release it. So fitting an optical drive is really easy all you have to do is slide it in press the button and that's it, the pins have grabbed it so that's how easy it is to fit an optical drive in this particular case and a lot of other cases you do have to hold them in with screws and everything which is a lot more difficult now we're going to fit the hard drives We've actually got two of these that we're going to fit in a RAID 0 configuration. And they're both one uh, terabyte each. On this particular case, fitting an hard drive is really easy. All you have to do is press that tab and then pull out the hard drive enclosure. And then just fit your hard drive in it. And all you have to do is push the hard drive into the slot. Far enough so that that plastic goes on the other side of the lip. And then just press it closed and that's your hard drive fitted. All we need to do now is connect the cables to it on the other side. So we've got most of the components fitted now. We just need the power supply. So that's the lead wheel we're using. That's called a kettle lead. And then this is the actual power supply itself with uh, a lot of cables attached so we're just going to unpack that now and then fit it into the uh, case so now we're just going to put the power supply in position and then we're just going to put the screws in from the outside just to hold the power supply So we've got the four screws in there now, which should be plenty, and that'll hold that in position. Now that everything's installed, you need to go around and connect up all your power leads, and they are actually labelled up. And that particular one sits together like that, and is your main power for the motherboard. So that one will plug directly into that socket there. So I'm just going to go around now and plug all of these leads in that we need in the corresponding place. And it's pretty much idiot proof because it does tell you on, on the end where it should be plugged into. And obviously you will have quite a few of these spur at the end. And we also need to go around and plug in all the fans for the, uh, the cooling fans and the exhaust fans on the case. The most, the most important lead is this one, which is the one that connects to the motherboard. And you'll see that that actually slots onto that bit there. So we need to put that piece in first, and then that one with the clip on, and that will hold it in place. So that's that connection taken care of. Here we're going to connect up the SATA cable from the hard drive to the motherboard 
Uh, we've got two of these and one particular end there has a 90 degree bend on which is designed to push in there. So they're really simple to do, all you have to do is line it up and just push it into position until it clicks. And then the same with the other one. And also once we're around this side of the computer we'll connect up the power. So it's just a case of aligning the power connector and then just pushing it on. So that's the actual hard drives connected now. And then we're going to connect the hard drive SATA cables to the motherboard here on these SATA connections. Some of the trickiest connectors to connect up are these, which are from the uh, front panel. And it actually says on each one what it's for, which is that's a reset switch. And if you look closely on the back, there's an A and a G. The G stands for ground, so you know that that's the negative. You then have to consult your motherboard manual to ensure that you get it in the correct position on the front panel connector. So this is one of the most time consuming bits when uh, putting your computer together. We've connected up all of the cables now that we need to to get the computer working. The most important one is this one that goes to the motherboard. And then these connectors up here are quite important. And also the power connector here on the PCI card, on the graphics card is, is important.